And welcome to the Havana Beach Club in beautiful Aruba for World Valley Tootle Championship number eight, neutral ground. And we have an alternate bout. I am Gary Cruz, along with Federico Lapenda. And Rico, why is an alternate bout so important? This one there is Rodney Feber, one of the combatants. Hello, Gary. Hello, everyone. The reason why we always have alternate fights is just in case somebody gets hurt in the eight man tournament. And uh, instead of getting a fighter who has not fought before, we have an uh, alternate bout. This way, it's fair for everybody. Rodney is from Holland, and he is a mixed fighter. He does a little bit of everything, almost like Pancrase. And uh, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a legitimate contender here, isn't he? Absolutely. He just came back from a fight in Russia where he fought the absolute fighting championship. That pretty good for himself. He's raising the house, folks, right here in Aruba. Raising the roof. By the way, outside, the weather is absolutely beautiful. What a great vacation spot. Uh, we call this work, though, don't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, as you can tell, I mean, we're here right by the beach. The weather is nice. The crowd is excited, and the fight will be fantastic. Too. Silvio Zimmerman, our second combatant, and I believe he and Rodney uh, have a, a, knowledge of each, a knowledge of each other, rather. They're both from Holland, and he is a Thai boxer. Yeah, uh, Rodney has the advantage of being a better grappler, but uh, Sylvie, on the other hand, is a good striker, but I think Sil uh, Rodney overall will have the, will have the best of Sylvie. All right, so are you going on a limb early? Yeah, I am. I am. Actually, I'm a big fan of uh, Rodney. He's a very aggressive guy, and uh, he takes care of business. Looking for a mouthpiece right now, getting ready. And I think someone has uh, just slipped him on. He's ready to go. We have local television here. We have everything. So the scene is set. A great crowd here at the Havana Beach Club in beautiful Aruba. A couple of uh, Aruba announcers there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as, uh, as you mentioned, this fight is being televised live to Aruba TV as well as to Global Brazil. So as little by little, we're gaining more and more space as we pave the way with no holds bar fight. All right, baby, let's get ready to rumble in the words of a good friend of mine. <laughs> I hope he doesn't sue me for stealing that, but we are ready to go. Rodney Faveras in the white, Silvio Zimmerman in the black, and Rodney comes out with a low leg kick, nothing serious yet, both men filling each other out. Yeah, as I mentioned, both both strikers, however, Rodney, a better grappler. But it, see? Yep, he just takes him right around the waist, and now he's trying to get in there and do some Damage with the knee, and now he takes his man down. And down they go. And he is trying to headbutt, and he connects right to the left temple. Yeah, Rod Zimmerman. Uh, Silva trying to keep Rodney in the, his guard. Let's see how good of a job he can do. And he gets out of the guard, and now Rodney has a chance to no a reversal there as uh, Feveris is now in the bottom, takes an elbow, and an, oh, he gets a knee in the face. Yeah, actually, Silvio is doing pretty good in the ground. He re he reversed pretty good the situation and almost went for a, for a, a, a rear choke himself. A whole lot of coaching going on as Favors holds on to the cage, trying to get some leverage there. As uh, I'll tell you what, Zimmerman has him in a nice grip right there around the waist, trying to hold him at bay and keep him close enough where he can't be affected with the knees. And he's going to continue to try that as he gets a little wedgy there. His trunks pulled up very <laughs> high. Yeah, the, the referee tonight is Leonardo Castelo Branco, a Brazilian black belt jiu-jitsu, who has fought Igor Vovchanchin on the absolute fighting two. They fought for 35 minutes to a draw. The only and down goes the Zimmerman as he a uh, great leg sweep there. Yeah, Rodney again trying to, to bring the fight to the ground where he feels most comfortable. Silvio, on the other hand, as I, as I mentioned earlier, is doing a great job. Rodney's got uh, famous Dick Fry on his corner, free fight champion. Trying to throw a couple of left hands in there close. And again, it, no holds barred, folks. There are laws, there are no rules. This is Valley Tudo Championship number eight neutral ground. Rodney Zimmerman has his man, I should say is on the ground. Rodney Faveras is on top. And right now they are both taking a little breather. They've gone about a minute and a half, two minutes now. Yeah, Rodney in the side position, controlling his opponent, waiting for, for the right opening perhaps attack for an arm lock or, for the, or, or to go to the mounted position. Will the hu high humidity here make, make any difference? Because no, these guys are going to start sweating and it gets slippery and all kinds of things can happen. No, actually, no. Being open doors uh, it actually even helps the fighter because th there's you know, more oxygen than in the regular arena. Well, there's a nice little knee in the midsection by Favoris, and now he goes down low with a low leg kick. Yeah. But uh, can't get his man off his feet. He's trying to do that right now, and he's not able to do that because Zimmerman it just continues to keep his back against the cage. Yeah, Silva doesn't want to go to the ground anymore. He got a feeling that, you know, of Rodney's control, 
So now he wants to stay. Oh, that hurts, boy. That knee right in the inside of the leg. And he goes up high with an Egan. Almost hits him. And a couple of rights and lefts right there as uh, Rodney Favors is trying to load on Silvio Zimmerman. Yeah, I told you, Gary. Uh, Rodney is a very aggressive fighter, yet very effective. But, oh, a great knee to the jaw. Right to the face. Man, that has to hurt. A little headbutt standing up. And another knee that comes up a little bit short on the inside, but it's very interesting the way Rodney Favors is trying to break this man down, although Zimmerman counters with a right hand to the jaw. Yeah, and, and that also during the clinch, you'll see Rodney trying to knee Silvio to the, to the kidneys and to the liver. You can see a welt, a little uh, swollen, uh, actually the right eye, below the right eye. Oh, a nice jump knee right there. That had Muay Thai all over it, didn't it? Oh, all over. Look at that, right hands. Looks like the man, I'm talking about Zimmerman, is a punching bag right now. Yeah. As he takes a headbutt, but he took a great combination into the uh, midsection by Rodney Febras. Yeah, Steve seems he's just trying to buy time. I mean, it, he's not 100% there anymore. You think he's lost some confidence? I think so. I think it, it, it feels like he's already tired and, and frustrated. And, and, and you got to remember in the Hosbar fighting is every time you attack, you open yourself to be attacked. Couple of rights and lefts and an uppercut. No counter from Zimmerman. Boy, Rodney now total control, takes a knee to the face. This is a great fight. Man, I'll tell you, look at these guys. And, and how tough is Zimmerman? He has taken some humongous shots. Yeah, he's, take, he's, take, he's having a hard fight so far. But he's, he's, you know, he's keeping it together. Crowd kind of getting into this. They uh, also realize it's an alternate fight. But again, the winner here could go on to a big payday if uh, one of the main draw fighters does get injured. Absolutely. And there's another knee. Is uh, I'll tell you what, very impressed with the knee and leg work. Headbutts. And headbutts of Rodney Zimmerman. You normally see those headbutts on the ground, but this guy doesn't care. And as he's trying to break his opponent down, he's really trying to get those legs so weakened that he'll get him on the ground and then continue his onslaught. But right now, Zimmerman continues to hold him up high around the head. Yeah, and the referee, Leonardo Castelo Branco, just came to tell the fighters not to hold defense, which is not legal in the World Valley to the championship. One of the very few rules. Oh, boy, right down he goes. Then that's it. And he stops it. Fight is over. It Rod is over. Rodney Favaris, a right hand, drops the fighter, and then a leg. It looked like a knee. He dropped his fighter, and he can hardly get his breath. He is really gasping for air. You see it right there. Yeah, that was a, a knee to deliver. Oh, my Wasn't goodness. it? Yes, yep. it was. It sure yeah. was. And then you saw the extra knee yeah. right there. And just to make sure. But there is your winner from Holland, Rodney Faveras. And he was impressive. Yeah, very aggressive fighter. Very determined, as I mentioned to you earlier. Did the same thing in, in Russia. Came short in the last fight in Russia. Lost in the final, but yet. Very, very aggressive and precise. Well, we just got the tail end of that, the blow that put him down. And a great pick by you uh, as we look at this uh, champion here, Rodney Faveras. And now he's, he did bring down the house tonight. He brought down Silvio Zimmerman with a brutal knee to the liver. And when you get hit in the liver, it almost paralyzes you. Yeah, it's just like a knockout. People don't realize. Sometimes as you, he takes the blow and only it's like three or four seconds later he realized he took the blow. Zimmerman's still not feeling very well. And he's uh, got a big welt under his right eye. And there's a great look a at a physical specimen, Rodney Faveras, who could be back. Who knows? My chance. And then I finish him. Because I know that I would win. So that is the problem for me. Was it your experience? Yes. Because it was my fifth time in the cage and his first. So I know that I must wait. I have 30 seconds of 30 minutes to fight. So it doesn't matter for me. So really good night for you. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, I'm tired. I must go. <laughs> A very tired and happy Rodney Faveras as he leaves. And we're getting ready for our second alternate fight from Brazil. Antonio Bigu. What does Bigu mean in Portuguese? Bigu means a free ride. Free ride? Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, I don't think there's anything free about trying to ride this guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a very talented Luta Livre fighter. And for those at home who don't know what Luta Livre is, it's a Brazilian style of fighting that is primarily grappling and it's trained without a gi, unlike Jiu Jitsu. And they, 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 from the guard, instead of trying to pass the guard and trying to get side control, they usually go for leg locks. Well, Bigo, of course, uh, well, let's listen to the uh, introduction. That was quick, effective, 
Antonio Bigu, the Luta Libre fighter from Brazil. A little history on him, Federico? Yeah, Bigu has won a couple Brazilian uh, Vale Tudo uh, fights. And uh, came, came from an injury, just had a, a knee surgery. And he, wasn't, he had to fought for about a year. So this is a comeback fight. He's excited, has something to prove to the Brazilian people. All right. Uh, we get some more activity as uh, here comes his opponent from Holland, Willie Peters. And I have seen Willie Peters in Moscow one time yep. in a brutal fight. Uh, this kid is tough. Yeah, Willie is tough. And, and you got to also remember he was the cage fighting championship number two champion. Beat the Brazilian black belt jiu-jitsu. So he's a man who, uh, who unlike some fighters, he has no respect to the Brazilians. Here's his intro. It's personal. I, I don't know if you remember, but yesterday on the press conference, those guys were really mad at each other. They were already bad mouthing. Oh, I saw him again in a fight in Moscow. Wow, let's listen to these guys here. All right, there's the everything you want to know about these two gentlemen in the red, Willie Peters in the black, is Antonio Bigu. Bigu, uh, again, a very tough man, but Willie Peters. Very, very, very brutal. Yeah, Willie has eight, eight uh, kilos, which is about 16 pounds over Bigu, give, giving him this little leverage. Uh, a lot more leverage there, yeah. Oh, look at that, and an advantage as he hits him with a right hand, and Bigu gets his man down, takes a single leg takedown, but Willie Peters says, I don't care, I can slug you down here on the ground. Yeah, Willie trying to stand up. He doesn't want to be in the ground. I, uh, Bigu looked a little stunned, actually, from that, those, those two first shots. But it feels like he woke up and went to that single leg, as you mentioned. Tries a knee there in the uh, lower, or actually up on the thigh area. Peters says, uh-uh, I don't like it here right now. But both men trying to think of their next move here as Peters goes for a leg to try and bring him closer and break this hold, but he can't do it. Now he's trying to get up, and he goes down again as uh, Bigu has, is in the half guard there. Yeah, Bigu has got in his corner Hugo Duarte, the legendary Hugo Duarte. The president of the Luta Livre Brazil, who will be fighting later. Yeah, our super fight, but hey, Billy Peters has gotten up. And watch this guy. He's a great striker, ladies and gentlemen. But you can't strike him. So oh, he nails him with the right hand. And Bigu took the right, and now he throws his man back down. But Willie Peters trying to get him in the guard. He is in the guard right now, but I'll tell you what. Bigu took a huge right hand. Yeah, a couple, actually. Boy, I, I, I could feel that over here. We got to get a little further away from the action, partner. Okay, the, the referee is admonishing both men and telling them not to hold the fence. Yeah. Now he punches them after they told him to fight. A little sucker punch. Oh, it was cheap shot. But Willie Peters, that is not beyond him. Yeah, Willie doesn't want to be there. He's very uncomfortable in the ground, even though he's a wrestler. He oh, right hands right over the ear. As he tries to connect, and Bigu comes back and tries to counter with a headbutt. Yeah, Bigu is staying in the guard, which is unlike usually, the, as I mentioned, the Luta Libre guys are more aggressive. They try to go to a, either a leg lock or, or a choke from there, but... Well, he's in with a much bigger man, but oh, he pounds him with two left hands. A glancing blow with a third. Both fighters getting instructions from their, their uh, handlers. Willie Peters on the bottom here. Bigu in the guard on top. He's trying to talk to his man. There's a, a little trash talking going on here. Yeah, and uh, I, I think one of the problems the referee is having is with the eye gouging. Willie Peters wouldn't eye gouge, would he? Oh, a right hand. Then glance off the ear, and those are going to add up in a while. You're going to get knots on your head, welts. And there's a big cut on the forehead of Willie Peters. Look at that. Blood is streaming out yeah, of a cut on the head of Willie Peters, and I don't know how he got it. I wonder if he got from, from trying to headbutt a uh, big goal. Oftentimes, fighters try to headbutt their opponent, and they use the, the wrong part of their head. You wonder if Willie, because the blood's not in his eyes, you wonder if he realizes he's, he's even cut. No, with the, the amount of adrenaline these guys have in their body right now, they don't they don't feel anything, man. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, though. I think uh, Bigu, earlier in this bout, felt a couple of right hands from Willie Peters. Gary, I've talked to a couple of people, and they believe that you should do one of those fights so you get a better feeling. No, I rolled around in, the in uh, I want to say, Valley Tudo Championship number three with Red Herd, uh, the legendary Red Herd, who is now a policeman, I understand. And 
uh, I had enough leg blocks, arm bars, and choke outs. I, I, I had my fill. I'm fine. I don't, I don't need that. And I said, watch this. I definitely don't need that as Bigu comes in with another head. Headbutt. Plus, I'm way too small. I'm down to 190 now, Federico. Both fighters, though, look at this. Oh, but we got the middleweight division, Gary. That shouldn't <laughs> stop you then. Uh, you're one of the great promoters of all time, but uh, no thank you. World Valley Tudo Championship number eight, neutral ground. We are in Aruba, the Havana Beach Club, and you are watching Antonio Bigu on top, Willie Peters in the red, as they go about now, about four minutes in. Yeah, now they fight a little stale. Look at this, they just continue to, it's interesting that referee is just keeping a very close eye on these guys, much closer than I've seen in many other fights. Yeah, I mean, the referee plays a very important role in these fights, you know? And, uh, I mean, anything can happen in, in the, you know, like an eye gouge or, or, or holding the fence, which does affect the outcome of a fight. Well, you know, we'll give a special thanks to Ron Nyquist, is that correct? Yes. And yes. Ron, of course, uh, one of the promoters here, and uh, this guy found some pretty good fighters for you. Yeah, yeah, Ron was the guy who, who brought the WVC8 to Aruba. And uh, he's the, one of the owners of the Havana Beach Club, this great nightclub, the place to be when you come to Aruba, right in the water. You should work for the Convention and Visitors Bureau. You're doing <laughs> a very nice job. You've had a good time. All right, well, these two men, Bigu and Peters, continue to grapple along the fence there. They both are exchanging blows here. Yeah, and, the, and, and as you mentioned earlier, the referee right on the action. The fans now getting into this. They want to see some more activity. Yeah. These guys haven't moved from that spot in the last two minutes. Yeah, I think the referee should restart the fight, actually. I think it's a little stale. The crowd is getting into this one. They're chanting. I like to see chicks in the corner. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Look at that cut, though. It's bleeding profusely right now. A head wound is, is such a nasty one to have because... It, also, it looks a lot more serious than it is. And, and they break him and look at Willie Peters. That's it. Willie Peters is covered with blood. Uh, are they going to stop this? Yeah. Willie Peters wants to go. This guy will never quit. Yeah, Not in his own volition, but the referee, I think, is going to halt it on a cut. Looking out for the safety of the, the combatant. And that comes first. And, I mean, Willie's cut very, I mean, you, you, you can see the side of this cut here, Gary. Now, would this go to a decision or would it no, just... No, yeah. So Bigu is going to be our winner? Yeah, Bigu is the, the oh second alternate. Oh, my God. Yeah. It looks like he was in a car crash and his head went through the windshield. Yeah, Willie... Oh, they're going to go. They didn't... No, Willie wants to go. They're going to give it to Bigu and Willie Peters is saying, what? Yeah. I'm ready to fight. No, but Willie, uh, Willie was cut very... I mean, the, the cut was very, very big. He's still, even with that huge cut, is still trying to headbutt Antonio Bigu. Okay, those are our alternate fights and two interesting fights. And so Rodney Favares wins the first alternate fight over Silvio Zimmerman. And this one is stopped. Antonio Bigu of Brazil. Yeah, Bigu wins the second. the man from Holland. Yeah, Bigu wants the second alternate. So now, in case anybody gets hurt in the ultimate, in the alternate, in, during the tournament, we got two alternates to recoup. Uh, here's some earlier action. Watch your right hand. Boom. And that actually connects. And that one on the back of the head. As he also, I'm talking about Bigu, just stayed in there. He was very tenacious and uh, very courageous. Yeah, Bigu wanted to go to the ground. That was his game plan. He came and he was very effective. Well, Cornerman talking to Willie Peters, and he just can't believe that this is over. He was refusing to leave. And finally, he uh, looks at the crowds. And they're, <laughs> they're booing him. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, Dick Fry came, his corner man, and, and, and talked some sense into Willie. And I mean, it was the right thing to do. Well, there again, our counterparts from Aruba Television. Again, this is going all over this island nation, actually all over the Caribbean. Yep. Let's listen to Willie. I was trying very hard to, uh, to, uh, to lose a mouth at the floor position. And I did everything to uh, come, come up. All right, you heard Willie Peters saying he did everything he could to, to continue, but he could not. And you see a little earlier action. Look at that right hand. Boy, you hit it right on the belt. I didn't see that initial one, but that one stunned him. And I'm talking about Bigu, but Bigu finally weathered the storm, took the man down, and that's where they ended up. 
And that, that's what separates a, a, a medium the fight to a good fighter. Uh, you know? to know it's it. when uh, he's uh, able to pick, up, pick uh, himself up. He's to be brought by everyone. Uh, yeah, it can be very easy, it can be very easy. Alright, we have a fighter. Can you know the other uh, Speaking of foreign language that I don't understand. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the interview is actually uh, done in Dutch. Uh, Here we have Sander to Tohausen, uh, a very experienced uh, yeah, fighter uh, who, uh, who faces Karl Kaz, a very, very uh, tough uh, Russian uh, fighter. Uh, Fighter. Karl Kaz has won the last a one of the a AFCs, and uh, he's a Thai fighter who learned to grapple, which, in my opinion, are the best fighters, the strikers that learn to grapple. All right. They're speaking English right now. And now, here we go. Sander Tolhassen against Karl Kaz from Russia. You set it up very nicely, my man, and uh, let's watch our fighters come into the ring. There he is. That is Sander Tolhassen. You heard him a moment ago. He didn't look quite as mean with that hat on, but he looks <laughs> like a tough cookie. Yeah, this guy has got uh, perhaps 15 to 20 fights in, in his belt. You know, he's very relaxed. He comes to do what he knows. However, Kaukaz does have the advantage being, being more comfortable in the ground. He's given away 7 kilograms, yeah, which that is what? About 14 pounds. About 14 pounds. Strong guy. Oh my goodness, yeah, he's a physical specimen. I had, I'd seen him walking around here, didn't realize he was that big. Yeah, Sandy is a very, very fit and relaxed fighter. Great inside game. Okay, here's the introduction. Kyle Cross coming in from Russia. Yeah, Kyle Cross, I, I believe, has a little bit of a disadvantage weather-wise. You know, because at this time of the year it's really cold in Russia, and, and here he is. The trip is a little bit longer from Holland to Aruba is nine nine hours. Kakas in the red, in the boxer shorts. So Hassan facing the camera and facing us right here, as he opens with a a kick low but didn't connect. These guys are <laughs> not too anxious to mix it up real quick. Oh, he tries a low round kick. Yeah, one thing about this fight, this particular show, the World Value to the Championship number eight, is that m most of the fighters are very experienced to standing up. And you can tell just by their stands, and you get experienced fighters that feel themselves a little bit before they get started. There we go. And and uh, Krakow, Krakow. Look at that. He takes his man down, and they spin on the on the ground, and standing straight up over to Hassan is... Karkas, and Karkas tries to go in, but Tohazen loads him off with a couple of punches. Nice strikes. The Russian was trying to, going to try and pick his man apart in a standing position. Nice kick to the inside of the leg by Tohazen, but look at this. He's going to, looks like he's trying to throw a, he is, he's trying to throw a submission hold on him. It, I, look, it looks like Karkas was going for a leg lock. It sure looked like that. But he, instead he passed the guard and now he's in the side control. Now, Karkas loves this position, doesn't he? Yeah, Karkas, as many of the Russian fighters, is very calm, very... They, they play a chess game, almost, with their opponent. Oh, look at this, he's still trying to... Now he stands back up, so he's looking around again. You know, uh, the greatest Russian of all, in my opinion, is... I think the greatest bare-knuckle fighter in the world, the bare no holds barred fighter, got to be Igor Vovchenshin. I agree. And uh, he was in obviously BC seven, yeah. Uh, yeah. World Valley Tudo Champion seven, and uh, that guy is unbelievable. These guys have to learn from him. Yeah, I have to agree that Igor Vovchenko right now is the number one fighter in the world, especially after Kerr hasn't fought. Look at Kako hit him with a fist and an open hand. He goes in, he wades in. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but there was some great activity there as the fighter from Holland continues to say, "Wait a minute, where, where did this guy come from? He was a buzzsaw." Thorhausen. Thorhausen says, I got to get up here. The bigger man on the ground. There's a little uh, pointing, gesturing, and a uh, couple of kicks. But your thought about uh, Vovchenchen again? Yeah, Vovchenchen is the man right now in the, in the whole body. You know, rank number one. Oh, right hand to the jaw. And that's it. And that's it. 
Tohausen, the referee, said he can't take any more. And he was almost knocked cold with a right hand. I could, he, you, could you hear that? Yep, and, it, and it, uh, once San the game went to the ground, Sander could not uh, pick up his game back up, you know? Boy, I'll tell you, look at that right hand right there. That was the one. That was the one that r rendered Sander Tohausen defenseless, and he's going to take another shot a little later on just for good measure right there. And Leonardo. The we can't let this happen, and there's a great look at uh, the winner of our first tournament bout, Kaka of Russia, so he will advance, and he'll meet the winner of the Heath Hearing Erwin Van Steen bout. So what he a good bout. Yeah, it looks like Kaka is limping, limping a little bit. Yeah, right there he's not. He's pounding this man. And you see the open fist, the slap, and then he starts closing the fist, and he's a lot more effective, and Sander Kohlhausen just couldn't, couldn't combat that. They well, shake hands, and there's that sportsmanship that you love to see in the world of the World Valley Tudor Championship in this one, number eight. That defines the first winner of the, the semifinal, no, the quarterfinals. Uh, do you see that cut on the right knee? Uh, cut, cut? I think that's actually blood from Kohlhausen, uh, no? I don't know. You said he was limping earlier. That yeah, I yeah. I, I thought he's... Right foot seems to be a little slow. Ah. You see how he's looking a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I sure do as they leave the ring here. Gosh, it's a beautiful night here in Aruba. We are at the Havana Beach Club, and this is World Valley Tudo Championship number eight, neutral ground. I'm Gary right, Cruz, and let's listen to the interview. What happened? A well, man, a few words. He said it was very difficult, but he got it done. Stage fight in Holland. Is what it's called here in America? Um, it, it depends on what company. They call it extreme fighting, ultimate fighting. Uh, no holds barred. Usually, is a term. It's a broad generalization, I guess. Of, uh, they call it no holds barred fighting. He's hearing an interview with him. Comes from Brazil. Brazilian fighter said, "Well, we started developing it." <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to get into that argument. I, I couldn't tell you either way. So. Okay. You're going to fight, uh, um, there are going to be fighters here from, from a lot of countries, from Europe, from, from Germany, from Russia even. Uh, they're going to play the same game? No, I don't think so. Uh, act, every, every country has its own individual fighting style. That's why I'm really excited to be here. I, I'm really looking forward to fighting uh, different countries. Um, you know, Russia, different, different type of wrestling than what we're used to in America. Uh, Brazil, of course, jiu-jitsu. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I'm looking forward to the fight tomorrow night. A lot of these fighters are not really freestyle fighters. Some come from kickboxing, right. other come from... What is your type of sport? Um, I've done a little bit of everything. I, I wrestled in, in high school and college. Uh, I'm boxing a little bit. I, I, I did sambo. So I've, I've got a little bit of experience with a little bit of everything right now. So hopefully that'll work for it, work to my advantage, get to see some different things. Do you know some of the other fighters by name or what some fight? Um, really the only fighter I knew coming in is uh, Hugo Duarte and uh, Remco Pardu, and I just because I've seen them fight in the Ultimate before. But other than that, I, I really didn't know anybody else that's here. So it's kind of getting to meet new people, and it's exciting. Really You're going to win. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Everything works out. There he is, the young American Heath Hearing, and uh, he's going to fight Erwin Van Steen. You see the particulars on these gentlemen. Boy, Hearing's a big kid. Oh, yeah. Both fighters, though. He's uh, 200, by almost 240 pounds, and uh, he's, is he a name to watch in the future? Absolutely. My name a is young Heath kid with a great future. United States of America, here to fight an international cage fight in Aruba. We got to teach him to say Valley Tudo. <laughs> international cage fight, but here comes the American flag, and he's a very popular choice here. These fans are getting off their feet, and they're giving him a great ovation as he walks in with one of his corner people. Heath Hearing. A kickboxer, although you heard in the interview, he says he, he's done some sambo, he's done uh, uh, some wrestling in college and in high school, so this guy, he's boxed, so he's done a little bit of everything. That's how you find these fighters now, more and more, don't you? They get, they really train in so many different forms, you know, uh, boxing and fighting forms, I should say. Yeah, since the no since no Hood's Bar has been introduced to, to America, uh, uh, huge revolution, I should say evolution has happened to the martial arts. Now everybody's cross training. Boy, listen to that crowd. They really like this kid. Lots of, of Americans America. here in the crowd. Yeah, you got to remember. That's right. Reservation. Uh, this is like a vacation spot. I did see, uh, I was on the beach. 
<laughs> but I had my sunglasses on, so you didn't know what I was looking at. Here we go. His opponent. <laughs> Erwin Van Steen from Holland. Pankrace fighter. And he's coming into a no-holds-barred fight where uh, he's not used to being struck on the ground, is he? No. No, I... Uh a little, a little tense, actually. I mean, I, as, you know, I, I feel him a little uptight, and with the responsibility, he's, you know, he's got all, all the Dutch crew here pushing him. By the way, I do want to promote our super fight later on. Mikhail Avetsian against Hugo Duarte, the legendary Hugo Duarte from Brazil, who is also working in a couple of these fighters' corners tonight. You know what? I just figured this out. This crowd likes everybody. <laughs> Here's the introduction. No, nope, they are. Here they go. Failed to do the introduction. That's okay with us. The American tries for the double leg takedown, and he makes it as he jumps right on top of Erwin Van Steen. Van Steen now taking some headbutts from the young American Heath Hearing. That was a slop takedown. He almost missed the foot. <laughs> he did, but he, he actually uh, hold. He actually worked his way up his body and managed to put him down. And now he's in the position where he wants to be. Yeah, Erwin, Erwin lost a great a great chance to capitalize on that fight. Yeah, a lot of times, I, I'll never forget Vokchenkin one time fighting uh, uh, Nick Nutter in, in Tel Aviv, and he came in at a shoot like that, and uh, Vokchenkin got him with a knee and knocked him out in 25 seconds. So you're right, he dodged a bullet. I'm talking about Heath Hearing of the United States. A wrestler, 240 pounds, very comfortable where he is right now, just uh, controlling his opponent. Waiting for an opening, a couple headbutts to soften him up. There are some great U.S. fighters, and uh, we may be seeing maybe the birth of a, a new great U.S. fighter. Who knows? He continues, though, to work over his opponent, trying to throw a right hand and lefts and rights, and then he goes back down. Going to try and stick in a headbutt. Oh, and he connects twice. The man from Holland is getting pummeled right now, folks. Yeah, he's not doing much, actually. The American continues to try to work the back of the head, then comes with a fist under the guard, and boom, right on the jaw. Heath Herring. Yeah, he's very aggress aggressive throughout the fight. And as you mentioned, a, cr uh, a young kid with a great future. Y you can tell he's got wrestling in him. Look at the balance. Look at the leverage, he, especially that, that extended left leg, as he continues to try and headbutt his opponent. Yeah, you got to remember, wrestling technique together with 240 pounds <laughs> is a great combo. I saw Mark Kerr do something like that a few times, a great, great Valley Tudo fighter. And there is a couple of very big men in the ring right now, and Heath Herring on top. Continuing trying to impose his will on his opponent. You can hear those shots to the midsection, to the side. And there, look at the, look at the opponent. I'm talking about Edwin Van Steen. He's just, you can see him wince every time he takes a shot in the ribs. He caught eight shots without a counter. Yeah, he's gonna fit. He, he'll be a little tender tomorrow. The only thing you worry about, obviously, with a lot of fighters is conditioning. And hey, did they let it all go too soon or what? But it looks like. Heath Herring still has an awful lot of energy. Yeah, and he's managing well. And you got to remember, Gary, when you're 21, you know? <laughs> I can't remember that. I have shoes that are 21, but I, I don't remember being 21. But look at this. And I never was this big. Look at that headbutt. And just that weight on top of you has to wear you down, too. And I'm talking about that 240 pounds of Herring on top of his opponent who comes in at about 100 and make that, uh, oh, 210. No, he comes at 110, so it's 220. Okay. No, 230. He's a pretty big guy. Yeah. Too. I get my kilograms and my pounds mixed up. You have to help me there, my Brazilian buddy. I'm with Federico Lapenda. My name is Gary Cruz, and you are watching Heath Hearing and Edwin Van Steen in the second bout of our tournament, our eight man tournament. World Valley Tudo Championship number eight, neutral ground. The Havana Beach Club here in Aruba has a great right hand. Look at the side of Edwin Van Steen from those right hands from Hearing. It is crimson in color, red. It is, you know, he winces every time because he just softened them up. You're going to bruise those ribs eventually. 
Yeah, I actually had a, a, a fighter of mine who took so many of those blows to the to his, you know, left section that he, he he was peeing blood the next day. Oh, this could be a real possibility if he continues to take that kind of abuse. What can what can Van Steen do to, to get out of this mess? Van Steen's actually fighting from with the open guard, which is a smart move, but he should put both of his foot, both of his feet, sorry, my English. That's okay. On uh, on uh, his hip and pull him back and try to stand up. They're gonna stop this. He just couldn't take anymore. He looked at his corner man and he said, no man, I can't take anymore. He must have taken unanswered 50 shots in both sides of his rib cage. There's your winner, Heath Herring. Yeah, he showed a lot of heart, but uh, he's definitely a better man tonight. It's interesting, uh, the referees are very quick now to get in there. Is there a reason, I've seen other times when guys wouldn't submit, wouldn't quit, and where they've let it go. It's a sport overall, you know, and, and, this, and, and safety comes first. There he is. He's looking at somebody in the crowd. He might have met one of those pretty girls uh, on the beach, but uh, he will go on to the next round, and he's going to face the Russian, Kakaz. That'll in the a, next round. That will be a great match. Yeah, I, 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 you got to believe it. You know, you got a big, big, burly guy like him and, and a very, very tough Russian. But look at this. This is what was the demise of Edwin Van Steen. He took so many rights to the ribs. He continued to take him, and uh, he walks out of the ring very slowly. He's okay, though. He's saying, boy, my ribs are killing me. Here's an interview with the American, I believe. As he walks, here he is. What's going through your mind right now? Gotta finish it off and win the whole thing, man. You've got another match. Why did you? How did you win? Took him down and beat on until he quit. I guess I don't know exactly what happened. Okay, thanks very much. Great, great logic there. He said, "How did you win?" As you heard, he goes, well, "I just took him down and beat on him until he quit." That's exactly <laughs> what happened. As you see the takedown, you're right. If he has a knee there, ooh, we could have seen something out. There's some of the beautiful beaches here. Look at that sand. There you have Remco Pardu. A UFC uh, participant, very tough judo man, jiu-jitsu, comes in at weighing, I think, 240 pounds, you know, 250. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's up in that 250 range. and uh, Since the UFC, he's learned a lot. Michalis Delagianakis. We'll go with the first name, Michalis, because he is from Greece. And uh, he comes in at 98 kilos. This is actually the first time a Greek has participated in a, in a no holds barred event. And I got this call from this, his trainer. Really? Yeah. And uh, showed me, he sent me a couple of tapes, They're pretty impressive stuff. But I don't know how, I mean, they don't have a lot of ring experience. You know, I'm, I'm curious to see how well they would do. You know, the Greeks, though, traditionally are great wrestlers. Yeah, they're the creators of the Pankration, the, the real fighting back in the Olympic days. I know those days they used to fight to the death. Yep. And then go run a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here comes Remco Pardol. Yeah, Remco uh, is the man who fought Royce Grace in the UFC 2. He came back on UFC 7 and fought Marco Huas for 15 minutes. And since then, he has improved a lot. He's training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with Fabio Gurgel and uh, pretty much helping to bring. Uh, jiu jitsu awareness to Europe. From Holland, Here's his introduction. Remco Pardul. Remco Pardul from Holland. And again, as you pointed out, he, he's working with one of the greatest jiu jitsu men I've ever seen, Fabio Gurgel. Yeah, Fabio, without a doubt, is an unbelievable fighter. Let the excitement begin. Here we go. Michalis from Greek. Is, uh, has his back to the screen right now. You get your typical striker versus grappler. Notice the... Uh, David and Goliath. Right, and look at this. A lot of action, a lot of flying fists, but not many connecting at this point as Remco just really is physically a much stronger man. And, oh, he takes a left hand, but he gets his man down. He pays the price, but now he's got him on a side mount. Big left hand by the Greek. The Greek was throwing everything, even kitchen knives. Notice the shoe wear. So uh, the kicking days, I believe, of Remco are over because you're not allowed to kick if you wear shoes. Yeah, Remco not much of a striker. I mean, he's a, a, a grappler, 
that, that was the game plan, you know? Close the distance, take his opponent down, and try to capitalize on the ground. Will he go for maybe a submission hold, something along those lines? Looks like he's trying to work that arm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, from that point on, you know, there are so many submissions. Choke, yep. leg locks. Arm bar. Yeah, yeah, whatever he wants. Now, it's just a matter of him taking his time, like a snake eating a... See that knee to the back of the head? That has to smart. It's going to leave a mark. <laughs> <laughs> But that was this very subtle. He just threw the knee to the back of the head. And now it looks like, well, he's just, just biding his time here, trying to figure out how he wants to put this guy away, if he can indeed do that. The Greek's a tough cookie. Oh, yeah, that arm is exposed. I think Remco is, is, is not paying much attention. Of course, it's easier for me to say from here. Yeah. But that arm is pretty exposed. Wouldn't an elbow in a midsection be, be perfect about now, or yeah. oh, or maybe fist in the groin? Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you ask, you attack. I mean, you strike a little bit, but from that point on, you should try to get a submission. Nice pose. back elbow to the side of the face, now being defense, or trying to be defensed by McAllis, who continues to wonder what, what really happened here, because he said, I hit this guy as hard as I could with the right hand. He fell down, but he fell on top of me. Oh, and he makes a move there. Yeah, I mean, and Rem Rem Remko is a technician, and once you get him in a side mount like this, you know, he knows how to put it, how to put this 200 pounds to work for him. Well, anytime you get in the ring with a Gracie and any, oh, he taps out. Yeah, arm lock. I'm in he got an arm bar, huh? It's called Americana. The America. Lock. Wow, that was it. that was quick. Yep. Better that than a shattered elbow or a broken wrist or something. Oh, Here we go, the winner. By arm log, representing Holland, Remco Pardo. Remco Pardo will advance to the next round. He has defeated the Greek, Michalis Delaginakikis. And if I hope I didn't butcher his name too badly, but uh, I'm the only reason I don't want him to advance is because you and I both can't pronounce his name <laughs> very well. But anyway, there's your champion, Remco, and uh, he's a tough guy. And uh, look at it. He just walks through some stuff. He actually takes a huge right hand in just a moment here. Boom, there's a left. But watch this right hand coming up. It was impressive. And then that was the last you heard of the Greek because Remco just took, virtually took over. And uh, Remco trying to get him down, but he wades in here and then throws a left. That was a huge left. I take that back. I thought it was a right, but it was a, a great, great left hook. But, get then, but it wasn't great enough. Together with Caracas and hearing, Remco advanced to the uh, same final. from a lot of countries. Uh, if you're going to fight Russian people, or for instance, German people, or American people... Hey, obviously, you did this interview yesterday. Fighting. Yeah, I was actually uh, early on. The, the you look like you're in fighting shape. <laughs> Having to do the translation now. I noticed. I caught he Luke says, no, he will actually apply whatever is necessary. He will, in, a, in a situation of international event, you have to adopt to what it comes. You know, if a, a Dutch fighter is a better striker, then he might want to take it to the ground. On the other hand, if the Russian is a better grappler, he will probably try to stand up. Does he know some of the other people that are going to fight here from other countries? Are they known? Você conhece os outros lutadores que vão lutar? Não conheço. No, he doesn't know any one of them. So it's really going to be a fight. It is a fight, the best fight that ever happened in the Caribbean. All right, the promoter. Now you are back in the booth here, of course. That was yesterday. Tell me about both these fighters. Yeah, Kakareko, like Piku and, and Hugo, a local league practitioner, very experienced in the ground, strong fighter, doing his debut in the ring. Of course, he's got the adrenaline ladies against him. In the other hand, we have Astra Vros Lahetsky. That's very close. Yeah. He's a Greek, our second Greek ever to perform at this level. Perhaps, a, you know, of course a good striker, but I don't know how good of a grappler he is. He's a Pankris fighter uh, from Greece. That's interesting, a combination. As uh, we wait for him to get into the ring here, they're ready to go. Here he comes. He looks like he's ready to rumble. He looks like he's ready for business. And as a matter of fact, uh, his corner guy looks tougher than he does. <laughs> yeah, his corner guy just lost the fight now. That is Mew Kakis. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, the uh, 
The Greeks are hanging together, my friend. Yeah, but actually that's the best of the two. So we should see with Astrovalakis. See what Astrovalakis does here. Look at that. That's a uh, it's about time to present 86 kilos. From Greece. Pounds would be 205 Rob pounds. 205. They're about the same weight. He's got a Viking tattooed on his chest. He's a religious man. He makes a sign of the cross. He may need a little religion. Yeah, I got it. You know, uh, Kakarako. Alexander from Brazil. Yeah, we got Kakarako in the other corner. Ready to prove himself. You, you, you like this guy. I mean, you've had him before. And uh, what, what, what's his great strength? Kakarako is... Oh, he did a great takedown immediately. <laughs> that looked like a football tackle, classic. It looked like he was an American football player. Yeah, he didn't want no standing up, you know. First time in the ring, very, he's got like all this nervous energy. Here he goes, and uh, you see him set up here. Looks very similar to the last bout we had with the Greek on the bottom. This Greek, Astrodovalakis, he's a... Uh, in uncharted waters, never before until tonight have any fighters from Greece ever been here. Now he jumps on top in the full mount. Yeah, and I here am. we go. He's going to do his work. He's going to throw a left hand to the back of the head. And you see Kakareko put those hooks on the legs of the Greek. And so from this point on, it's his game. And he just working the left side of the rib cage of the Greek. This is not going to last long. Look at the lefts and rights and lefts. More lefts. As he pounds his face with left hands and he tries to cover up and he taps out. Never had a prayer in this and Kakareko was impressive. Very aggressive to the point. No time to waste. Greek said, whoa, I'm going back and uh, practice my pound crates. <laughs> they don't hit on the ground. Here's the <laughs> announcement of the winner. In a minute and two seconds. All right, so what we do now, we are going to set it up. Kakaz will fight Heath Hearing in our first semifinal. There's a takedown, though, of this last bout. That was classic. That was classic Valley Tudo. And this is World Valley Tudo Championship number eight. Neutral ground, nothing neutral about the performance of Kakareko from Brazil as he pounds his opponent, the Greek. Astrovalakis into submission. The Greek says, get my hand out here. Let me tap. There we go. I'm done. <laughs> wow. Impressive fighter, Kakareko. So we've got a, Matt, tell me about this semifinal. You got Heath and uh, you got Kakas. Yeah, Ka Ka uh, first we got Kakas against Heath. David and Goliath, I think. Uh, That's a great, yes. 50 pound difference to Heath. And in the other hand, we have Remco and Kakareko. Another 50 pound difference. David and Goliath. You have a great athlete in Kareko and a just a great fighter in Remco. There's Kakaz. He's a, a wonderful athlete and a very tough guy. Heath Hearing, you've seen him. And what he said is the theory is I'll take him down and pound him until they quit. Let's see if he can do that. As both fighters now don't get much of a break here. It's called the ground and pound technique. <laughs> I like it. Here comes the American, the American flag flying freely. And again, he is, he's drawn the best ovations of any fighter so far. They really like this kid, and uh, he's a charming guy. Uh, gets a little spray there, maybe a little uh, asthma problem, but uh, clear that up. Clear those lungs up so he can breathe. This is a marathon. When you go into a tournament, it's basically a marathon of, of fitness, isn't it? Absolutely. There he is. Okay. Fighter needs to know how to spend his energy. When to hold, when to give it. Look at this crowd. Great crowd here. Oh, the excitement level is increasing as the fight comes. So Heath Hearing and Krakow. Hearing in the black. Going to try and. Oh, he goes down. Rushing on top and hello. Boy, beautiful scenery here. <laughs> Look at this, the American on top now on a side mount. He's gonna try maybe to do what he did earlier in his bout. Yeah, actually he's, he's going to arm, arm lock, they call the famous Americana. Yeah. Herring though, actually. Oh my, that oh. hurts. Oh. <laughs> oh my. You hear his corner, he says, break it, break it. Oh 
That, how much can you take? How much can you take? These Russians, they're tough as nails, man. They, 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 will, they will not tap. Oh, my goodness. That arm is twisted so far back. He's going to take it home with him, I think, hearing. Ow! Oh. And his, and his corner screaming, break his arm, break his arm. The Russian won't tap. Hearing is really trying to apply an awful lot of force as he has that arm pulled up on the back of the Russian, but the Russian is showing incredible strength. The hearing gives up on that and gets inside. Oh. <laughs> Actually, he's on a full mount here. Oh. And he's going to try and smack him upside the head, and he hits him in the back of the head three times with no answer. Now with the left hand, he slips it in. That was it. Oh, my. That was a couple of teeth. Oh, my. That was uh, unbelievable strength. The Russian's arm almost gets broken. Kyle Kaz lost a couple of teeth in this fight. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. They love it. People really appreciate a good show, but look at the strength move by the American. And Kyle Kyle just never had a prayer. He's a much smaller man. The American has got that arm twisted behind him trying to submit, and then it ends here. I just got a note here that uh, Remco is not going to continue the fight. Oh, no. Yeah, Remco is feeling his right foot. Therefore, he's not going to fight. We're going to have Rodney Fafir, the first alternate of the night. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, there's Keith Herring, your winner. And Kakao is going to go look for his teeth right now. Man, did he take some shots. And then the American showing the sportsmanship that you always see in World Valley Tudo. There's an opening barrage. Three unanswered, four shots to the head. And watch him work the left hand. You can see the sweat fly as he pounded him with the left hand. And then they're going to break this up. The Russian says, I can't, I just lost my teeth. Okay, Rodney Feverus. We talked about this at the outset, Rico. We said that maybe an alternate fighter could get in. And as you pointed out, Remco has a bad foot. So he had to pull out. So the uh, I don't know if he's a lucky alternate or not because he's going to fight Kakareko. Kakareko is a tough, tough man. I think this is going to be a great fight. Both fighters very aggressive. This could go either way. Now, does his prize money increase because he came out of the alternate round? Oh, yeah. For him, it's much better. Now he has a chance to, to not only to become a champion and win a belt, but also to make much more money. Right. The Havana Beach Club here in the lovely Aruba World Valley Tudo Championship number eight neutral ground. I'm Gary Cruz along with Federico La Penda and our second semifinal, the alternate, the lucky alternate, Rodney Faveras against this man right here. Very popular choice too, the Brazilian, Alexandra Cacareco. Very focused, both fighters. They got their hands full. Any notable victories for this guy in the past that you, that you can think of? Somebody that... No, Kakareko, this is his debut in the ring. Beautiful. Well, he's made quite an impression on me already. He had a very easy time of it with the Greek in the first round. And he's in against a much better fighter in Rodney Favaras. Yeah, very aggressive, incredible striker with good ground knowledge. All right, here we go. And Favaras is going to kind of keep his distance to fail this guy out, but... You can see how much more thick and muscular the Brazilian is. Both of them actually, uh, well, uh, Favaris actually is from Holland. He's in the white trunks. Yeah, Favir is trying to knock, uh oh, down they go. Yep, and he takes him down. Gonna really try and get that leg now, held on, and he throws a right hand to the midsection that doesn't even face Kakareko. Kakareko is uh, gonna plot his strategy as they work their way near the screen there. And these fighters now are just kind of going to play a little chess game. But again, uh, Rodney Feveris of Holland against Cacareco of Brazil, the Brazilian, a much bigger man, has him by over 20 pounds in weight. Yes. Almost 25 pounds. Si side mount. Definite side mount. And uh, Cacareco controlled the position, but Favirio's giving him a hard time. Trying to revert, trying to bring him to his guard. He got half guard now. Right, in the half guard. And Favaras is saying, "Let's see, what did I do in Holland last week to get me out of a mess like this?" <laughs> As a uh, crowd, very quiet right now, kind of waiting for you. Hear mostly the cornermen of uh, both fighters. But uh, folks are going to wait for some action. If something doesn't happen soon, you'll hear them to start and chant. There's so much going on the whole exactly. day in a fight like this. 
Uh, right now, there was a great left hand, and then the headlock. Oh, a nice slapping right to the ear by Kakareko towards his opponent. Oh, and he comes up with a left. Now he's got a full mat. He's going to lock him in again. Try to lock him in, and that's such a that's a tough position if you're on on the bottom. Very, very tough. Oh, a left hand across the face. Another left. They're going to stop it. Two powerful left hands from Kakareko, and Rodney Feveris is on Queer Street. He doesn't know where he's. Oh, there he goes. He's he refocused. <laughs> Man, he took two shots. Yeah. Look very at the difference in size there too. Very great. Now Favira's a taller man, longer reach, better striker, and the uh, and uh, you get Kakareko, a, a shorter, stocky grappler. Uh, Luta Libra wins out on this one. And there's your winner, Alexander Kakareko. Moves to the final against Heath Hearing. Heath Hearing and Kakareko in the final. Should be a great one. You're going to have a big, burly American. 50 pounds different. Wow. There we are, both gentlemen. Shine of great support. Here's a replay of uh, the double leg takedown. And, and another classic jiu-jitsu move, really. A great grappling move. And then he starts to work. Kakareko. He starts to break his man down. Took him a few minutes, and you pointed out, I said there wasn't much action going on, but in reality, there was a ton. Look at that left hand right on the kisser. That did it. Oh, that hurts. It is with a great pleasure that I introduce you guys to Hugo Duarte. Hugo Duarte is a big legend in Brazil. He, he's the head and the president of a, a style of fighting called Luta Livre. In Brazil, there are two styles of fighting. One is Jiu-Jitsu, the other one is Luta Livre. Hugo has won this type of tournament, which are called in Brazil Vale Tudo, in America Ultimate Fighting, and in Holland Cage Fighting. Hugo has won them in Brazil, in America, in Japan. He has unified three belts a year, a year and a half ago. And today he comes as the captain of the Brazilian fighters. He's bringing two fighters, one that will fight as an alternate, and the other one will fight in the eight-man tournament. And he will also fight a super fight. Do you think that because uh, in Brazil there are the sport is being uh, as much as a sport on television, as much as a sport being played. It has an advantage for them over countries where they're actually freestyle fighters or their kickboxers are doing MMA. Você acha que como existe países assim no Brasil vale tudo já existe há muito tempo é televisionado. Você acha que isso vai dar uma vantagem ao lutador brasileiro comparando com lutadores da da Holanda que lutam freestyle ou kickbox? A luta no Brasil já, esse tipo de modalidade de qualifico nós fazemos já há 50 anos já, né? Então nós temos um pouco já na frente já, mas o outros países já tem já pegado bem e já tem parelhado com o Brasil já. Eu acho que o nível está muito bom e depende muito de lutador para lutador. Você está dizendo que sim, no início nós tivemos uma vantagem por causa de que nós temos estado lutando esse tipo de luta por mais de uma century, 50 anos. Mas o que aconteceu é que todos se caíram with the techniques and with the style of fighting. And uh, he believes that not the style of fighting itself, but the fighter's heart that will make the difference. Uh, what style are they fighting? Because cage fight is different. They also do kickboxing? Mm, no, uh, Mikhail, Mikhail style uh, wrestling, uh, uh, freestyle wrestling, and uh, Kavkat uh, uh, style name Pankration, uh, mixed. Uh, <coughs> Striking technique or uh, and grappling te technique. What is a popular fight in Russia? What type of technique? Uh, sambo, uh, named sambo, uh, special uh, like in judo, but uh, special style in Russia. Uh, like, uh, named sambo. All right. Well, this is sets up our super fight, and there they are, Mikhail Avetsian against Hugo Duarte. This should be a great fight. Oh yeah. Hugo is an unbelievable grappler. The man comes with a 20 years tradition of Luta Livre. He's the man in Luta Livre in Brazil, isn't he? The man. On the other hand, you have Mikhail Vetsian, the only guy who went 35 minutes with Igor Vovchanchin. Tough, very tough fighter. They fought in the Absolute Fighting Championship number three in, Ra in Israel uh, in the semifinals. It was a judge decision. He went to to Vov, to Vovchanchin, but Mikhail, who also just comes from a victory from an absolute fighting number five, tough, tough fighter. Giving away about oh seven or eight kilograms. Fourteen pounds, fifteen, sixteen. Not much of a difference in in 
in between these two guys. You know? Well, if this was a bodybuilding contest, I'm giving it to Duarte hands down. He's a, a real physical specimen. Not that this young man isn't Mikhail Avetsian, but uh, boy, Duarte's a stud. We have some members considered to be the Vice Hygiene of Russia, a missile of a Gigan. They're so thick you can cut with a knife. <laughs> oh, man. As they do the introductions. And they're ready to go, baby. Here we go. Our super fight on World Valley Tudo Championship number eight, neutral ground from the Havana Beach Club here in lovely Aruba. Hugo Duarte takes his man down, Mikhail. Man, look at this. They are continuing to just work on some strategy. We've seen this so many times, the strategy here is a headbutt and another headbutt by Duarte, who is on top now. Yeah, they went quick to the ground, the ground both grapplers. I had seen a wrestler, Sambo fighter, and Hugo Luta Livre, so this fight would be no striking standing up. They would go quick to the ground as we predicted, and from this point, on oh boy big right hand there by the Russian did you see oh man and then he cuffs the hand and pounds on the ear and literally I'll tell you what that could break an eardrum if you hit it hard enough oh. I, I've seen it happen it's happened before yep pounding on the back of the head of uh, Hugo Duarte is Mikhail Avetsian and both men there's an awful lot of <laughs> a lot of work going on in between that you can't see as they continue to sit up there their strategy to see what they can do and totally in the guard now is Hugo Duarte as he pulls back and throws a right hand and the right hand connected Duarte with the headbutt good head work though by the Russian as he moved his jaw out of the way of that headbutt and took it more off the shoulder oh just a quick short right strike Oh, and oh. I poked him in the eyes! Oh my goodness, Duarte got poked in the eyes! Really bad by Avetsian. That is, that's a disqualification, isn't it? Oh yeah, the fight goes to Hugo. Wow, what, why would a, what would possess somebody to, I could, did you hear the scream? Yep. Oh my goodness! I cannot, Duarte is, is blinded basically, he can't see. Yeah, lack of sportsmanship from Avetsian's behalf. Duarte being led over to his court. That is unbelievable. That's unconscionable. Yeah, he was probably feeling overpowered by Hugo and, and uh, decided to, to do this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look, look how ready. Like, yeah. Oh, he, he could scratch. Watch this. Right there. The left index finger right in the eye. You see him shriek in pain. Are they going to continue? No, no, no. no. No, that's young will get right, qualified. Yeah, that's it. That is, that is that is a great call. Unbelievable sequence of events, ladies and gentlemen. In our super fight, Mikhail Avetsian was getting it handed to him by Hugo Duarte, so he decided to use a finger in the eye. Yeah. No eye gouging. He is disqualified, and there's your winner flat on his back. He felt wondering if he can see out of that eye anytime soon. Yeah, he felt the I mean, it was clear. Avetsian felt the power of Hugo. Oh, they want to look at that eye. He, he used the only rule that is, is not uh, possible in Vale Tudo. He put the fingers inside. The eye gouged. You can see? Yeah. Don't you think your uh, opponent was unfair? Completely unfair. <laughs> okay, thank you very much and good luck. Oh man, I'll tell you, was he unfair? He, no question about it, and he pays the price. He loses out on a good payday, too, for that stupidity. All right, we've got our final coming up. Kakareko and Keith Herring, but I still can't get over the eye gouge. I guess I'll have to because this should be a great one. Here comes a young American. This, this kid's tough. This is our David and Goliath fight. Uh, 60 pounds difference. Well, it was 50 a minute ago. What did he go uh, eat? I think he just ate some <laughs> sandwiches. <laughs> 
regardless, it's an awful lot of weight to give. 60-50, doesn't matter. This is a big kid. Who do you think is going to win, Gary? Well, you know, the American has been so dominant, and he's, I think his opponents have been better, as opposed to Kakadeko, whose opponents, I think, have been a little weaker. So uh, I'm going to buy eight, and I'm an American. Oh, there you go. Yeah. How about you? So I'm just going to bet the 10000 I'm paying you for tonight. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here he comes. Keith Herring from the United States of America. 250, 60 pounder. He has been incredibly impressive. His first opponent he took out with tremendous body strikes. And his second one, he, he did a great job with an arm and held it behind his back and almost broke it. As Kakareko comes in here, this guy is cut. He is a physical, physical specimen. And as Federico pointed out a little while ago, this guy is making his debut. And what a debut it is because he is on, he is on track, if he does it, to win the Valley Tudo Championship number eight neutral ground here in Aruba. Here's the introduction. And both fighters coming out now and both trying to strike initially. You know the American's going to try and get his man down, looking like a classic John L. Sullivan bare-knuckle fighter, though, as he's trying to throw a couple of meaningless jabs out there. The Brazilian keeps his hands open, and he's got the American down. He's on a side mount with the American. He pulls him down immediately. And this is the first time that the American has been on his back in this tournament. Kakareko has Heath Herring on his side now. The American trying to use that weight advantage and that uh, strength to push his opponent away, but that's not working. Kakareko, a very, very intelligent fighter. You see them just lying there, but here he comes. He's trying to get in an arm bar. He's trying to get an arm bar, and he pulls away. The American does, shows a great strength move, and then he pulls the Brazilian right to him, but the Brazilian pounds him in the ribs, much like he was doing to a couple of his other opponents. Kakareko pounding the American again as he tries to escape. He's in the half guard now. Little meaningless elbow to the back of the head. Kakareko trying to work some strategy, trying to get the American as he gets bumped on the back of the head. No damage at all. And a back fist, no damage at all. Keith Herring has not been on his back until about a minute ago. Through uh, this, this is his third fight. This is a, this is a marathon in this fighting. You take a third fight in a single night, you've got to be in tremendous physical condition. Herring just trying to slap the Brazilian on the back, and he, for slapping on the back, he takes a, <laughs> takes a fist in the face. Actually, an open hand. So one, one slap deserves another. These fans are glued to these two gentlemen because they know lightning can strike at any moment. Herring with the elbow high off the back of the head. The Brazilian winding up the throw, pulls it back. There's a couple of strikes in close. Well, you can't see that, but there's some good action underneath. Herring takes a shot on the side of the head, covers up. Herring now, still uh, in the half guard, Kakareko is. Herring tries to punch him in and feeling around, thought he might have gotten cut, but he hasn't. At least there's no detection of blood right now on Keith Herring or Kakareko for that instant, for that matter. American gonna put that foot up off of the screen now and try and push away maybe. He's just trying to keep his leverage. Boy, that Brazilian, Kakareko has quite a Quite a hold around the neck of Keith Herring. Doesn't look like a, close to a submission at all at this point, but he's just working it. He's trying to wear his opponent out, his bigger opponent, trying to wear him out. Oh, a big left hand by the Brazilian. And the American finally gets up. Brazilian still holding it. He throws him back down. Gets him down and... Now he's in the guard. Boy, a great power move by the Brazilian, who's now trying to lock in 
He's trying to lock the legs of the American. He throws a, a, a vicious elbow to the hip of Herring. Heath Herring knows he's in a fight, folks. And so, hey, I've got money on you, baby. Come on through, Keith. Well, I'll tell you, just a great strength move by Kakareko. Now they're going to break him. I'm back, Gary. I had to go see the, uh, the Hugo's eyes to see exactly what happened. And uh, I think he might even have a scratch his cornea. Oh, my goodness. That's, that's, a t that's an awful injury that could be certainly career-threatening. These two guys, you have missed some great action here. The American finally got back up, and he tried to throw a left hand there and just about caught a glazing one. And there goes his shoot as Kakareko tries to grab the American again, but the American counters and throws a knee to the top of Kakareko's head. Another knee, a vicious knee to the head. Oh, my. A third one. A fourth one. And he piles him into the cage right now. The American showing brute strength now, overpowering Kakareko. Earlier in his fight, oh, a great left counter with the knee by Kakareko. Kakareko showing great heart, though. Oh, incredible heart. He was dominating this fight until about just before you came back to sit down. I oh, left hand by the American Herring. Kakareko says, give me your best shot, baby. That didn't hurt. I think I'm. I think I'm. I'm, I'm going to lose that bet. That bet, Gary. I don't know. It, unless this kid runs out of gas, he's dominating right now. He's taking a breather. Both gentlemen are taking a breather as the fans get into this. You yeah. can always tell when a fighter gets a little tired. He starts waving his arms to get the blood flow. The acid builds up. And you you, you say that from experience, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> no, my fights never lasted that long. All right, these two, now the fans are getting a little impatient. They want to see some more action. Watch for Kakadeko to shoot, to go for the double leg or single leg takedown as he looks the American dead in the eye. And you can see the size difference right there. It's, uh, it's very, very noticeable, Federico La Penda. Is it 40 or 50 pounds? Well, <laughs> it, it could be, but when this fight's over and when this thing, uh, when they go back to the respective countries, uh, I think Kakadeko's going to make it about a 100 pound difference. <laughs> Especially if he wins. Well, the American, though, now trying to throw a couple of jabs. I think both are getting their breath back because they really expended a lot of energy. As uh, I, I'll tell you what, Heath Herring looks tired. He, is, he looks very, very tired. My commitment as a promoter to the crowd, I always try to give one great fight in every show. Of course, when there is dull fights, people complain and they get uh, upset. But if when every time I'm able to deliver one great fight, I'm satisfied. And that's, a great, that's the one. Yeah, these two, and, uh, you should have seen the first five, six minutes. Right now, though, both of them waiting to see what's up next. Who's going to make the first mistake? What opening will evolve here for which fighter? Kakareko, not much of a striker. I don't know what he's doing standing up with a much taller and stronger guy, but I think he's not able to take huge hearing down. Well, he took him down in the opening seconds of this fight, and hearing also likes to go and, you know, he's a grappler too. You know, he's got a wrestling background along with uh, kickboxing, but he there's a double leg, and he takes him down. He did it again successfully. Beautiful, and in the mount, beautiful uh, takedown. In the guard, I should say, is Kakadeko, but that was, that was classic, and we saw this earlier. A lot of elbows by the American to the back of the head, but Kakareko has been countering with the left hand. Look There's a heel. Look at the size difference of this guy. <laughs> Look at that. But I'll tell you, you can see it in the legs, especially. That. Kakareko's waist looks as big as a thigh of Heath Herring. <laughs> Man, that's a big difference. He's got him in a, well, they, they just kind of yeah. working that same strategy. This time, though, Herring showing some great flexibility as he brings that leg up and yeah. puts a heel on the back of uh, his opponent in the kidney area. Kakareko just took Heath to the by, by the fence to avoid his escaping. I think Herring is tired. He, uh, he really expended a tremendous amount of energy about four minutes ago when he turned on a barrage and, and he was striking, kicking, and all those knees to the head. I think he just took it out of him because he looks tired now as he takes a left to the face. I think both guys are dead tired. 
Well, you know, folks, if you've never seen Ballet Tudo, and this is your first time here at WBC number eight, neutral ground, these guys do not take a break. The only breaks they take are during the bout itself, and they can make a big mistake by taking too long of a break because that other guy might jump them, and it could be over like that. But there are no rounds, nothing. They go 30 minutes. But that's the beauty of no holds barred. You know, if you can deal with the cliche, you can expect the unexpected. Always. And I've seen so many fights end just when you didn't expect it to happen, as you just pointed out. But here we are in a half guard now. And the American is, the American lying there saying, okay, we, how can I get out of this mess? He was trying to go for a guillotine choke. You see, if he, if he slipped his left hand around Kakareko's head, he'd have a shot, but he exposes himself by doing that. But you're right. I mean, that, that, that would be the next strategy. As a kickboxer, primarily, uh, not, a, not a hold that they use very often. Might yeah. not know how to do it. Interesting how Kakareko is, uh, stays on his half, on the half guard and doesn't try to pass. Yeah. It, it That's the sign that I think he is pretty tired. That and maybe a lack of experience, like you said, this is his coming out party. And boy, has he been impressive. Alexander Kakareko of Brazil here in the finals against Heath Herring of World Valley Judo Championship number eight from the Havana Beach Club here in Aruba. And I think these fans have got their money's worth as the American tries to get out. He takes a couple of laughs, spins over, and he neck in the guard. Oh, my, what action. Oh, the crowd is going insane here. Man, lightning quick. Kakareko took the American, flipped him over as he thought he was getting out of it, pounded him twice with left hands, and then flipped him right back over, and in the guard they are again. Great match. Woo. There's that heel to the back in the kidney area and a counter with a little bit of an elbow to the rib cage of the American. Right hands coming over. American with a headlock. Trying to hold on, using that heel again. And the Brazilian counters with the right hand to the rib cage. There's that heel. He's going to wear those shoes out. Right hand, another right. And again, this is the same thing that Heath Herring did to his previous two opponents. He punched them in the ribs much like he's taken it. Right there. And he knows how, he now he knows how that feels. The fans are chanting. Trying to reverse. Kakarako uh, keep, keeping the position. Heath Herring is finding a smart fight even from the bottom. He had the, he's fine with the open guard. When the time comes, he's cl he closes the guard. How many of those shots to the ribs can you take though, Federico? Mm. That just wears you down and they forget, they'll get bruised and so sore that you can hardly breathe. I'll tell you what, no one tonight's gonna sleep very easy. I mean, especially the two finalists, they've gone through three fights. This is the third bout of the night for each man and they're still fighting with their hearts. And I think we're already almost 10 minutes into the fight. Easily. Except for a lull of about two minutes, this thing has been nothing but nonstop action. And boy, you can just see how much they're working there, sweating profusely. As Heath Herring now trying to roll out of this situation, but it's not working for him at this point. Kakareko continues to bury that head with the help of Herring's arm but bury that head in, uh, in along the cheek of Heath Herring. Again, instruction from both corners. You see him. Hard to find. Uh, it's easy to find. You can find a corner in an octagon. <laughs> All right, they taking a little bit of a breather. There's a right hand, just to keep him honest. Another right hand, and you can tell that rib cage is getting sore. That hand comes down every time he takes a shot there now. That elbow will come down, although he kept it up twice there to endure that pain. But that just flat hurts. Slips in a quick left hand. Kakareko on top if you just walked into the room to watch this. This is our championship fight. Heath Herring, the American, on the bottom. The Brazilian Kakareko now, Herring's up. 
He pushes his opponent away. The fans love it. They want to see more action. Herring seems to have surged, gotten some more energy. He's bobbing, he's weaving. He's looking like a heavyweight. Throws the left hand out there. Throws another one and a whip by the Brazilian with a big round left hook. And the Brazilian shoots to take the American down again. Trying to pull him down and he's got him down again a third time. Crowd is going crazy. I just think the American was so tired he couldn't avoid that. Federico has been called away again. Lapenda, he is again attending and looking apparently some uh, additional problems with that eye of Hugo Duarte, who uh, was, uh, if you saw it earlier, was gouged in the eye by Mikhail Avencian and uh, of the Russian, and he was, of course, disqualified. But Duarte having some serious problems with that eye. Anyway, this bout continues to go, too. We're way past the 10-minute mark. And I, well, Kakareko remains in the guard. The American remains on the bottom. Going to lock those legs, and he's going to continue to take shots in that left side of his rib cage right there, and he brings a hand down to try and ward off a blow. But every time he does that, he exposes his face. And you know what happens then. Both guys have shown the ability to strike. I think the Americans are stronger than the two strikers, but it's tough to strike when you're on your back. So he's striking with his heel in the back again in the kidney area as the Brazilian counters with right hands. Both corners talking to their men. Duarte now in that corner just showed up to work with the Brazilian. The American now almost looked like a tap, but not really. No reason to at this point. As this match, a grueling marathon continues. It's the final. We will crown a Valley Tudo, World Valley Tudo champion number eight. We will crown one tonight within the next 20 minutes. Popping left hands there shortly. I think Federico Lapenda went to go get the hardware for these guys and maybe make out a couple of checks for the champion and the runner-up. We'll check on him in a few moments, but he will join me in here in the booth in a moment. There's another right, just soften him up. Boy, like a tenderizer, that right hand coming in there into the rib cage. It strikes, continues into the back of the open hand to the back of the head of the Brazilian as his head is pressed against the fence, the cage there. That can't feel very good. Uh, we're going to have, they're going to break both fighters up. They didn't see enough action, so they want them to get on their feet. A very cautious Kakareko saying, okay. Here we go. They're going to break him, and they, the American going to another a neutral corner. Okay, we want more action. So do the people. They're clapping. They're ready to go. Not enough action in the mind of the, uh, the referee. And there's a shoot. And the American tries to stay on top. He's got some padding coming off of that knee. I don't know what kind of a, how, how much he depends on that brace on that knee, but it's coming off on his right knee as he pushes the Brazilian into the cage. Both go down on their knees. And the American tried a reversal, can't do it. The Brazilian pulls him down again. Oh my. You don't stop in this sport. They're going to, well, they are stopping right now, and they're going to stay in their position while the referee, for the safety of the fighters, takes off that dangling knee brace, and he's telling the Brazilian, don't start yet, pal. Wait until I get this thing off. And he's struggling to get it off of that big old leg of Heath Herring. It's off now, and they're going to go. There we go. He, exact position they were in when they stopped. Interesting move. I've never seen that before, an equipment problem, as Heath Herring takes some right hands. Oh, my. Herring trying to administer a couple himself. We're at the 15-minute mark in this fight. These guys have been going strong. Heath Herring on the bottom. Alexander Kakareko on the top, the Brazilian against the American. Herring breathing deeply, mouth is open, trying to get some air into those lungs. 
You can see he is fatigued. There's no question about it. A couple of uh, open hands to the back of the neck. Now I gotta believe the Brazilian's gonna counter. There it is. He's trying to hit him with a fist on the back of the neck. You're talking about Heath Herring. Herring shaking his head saying, what do I gotta do to get this guy off of me? But he keeps him in the guard. Pounds the back of his neck and his ear. Fans on their feet here. And a lot of instruction here. As they grapple over in one of those corners in this octagonal shaped cage. Earlier fights in Valley Tudor, they used the ring, uh, normal boxing ring, but they did away with that because too many people were using the ring to their advantage. And a couple of uh, very suspicious things occurred. Uh, so uh, Federico Lapenda and his people of the World Valley Tudo organization decided to go with the cage. The fans love the cage. The fighters love the cage. So that's why we are here in Aruba as these two gentlemen continue this marathon. Heath Herring trying to maintain he needs another surge of energy. Kakareko has just been dominant on top here. Not a lot of physical damage being done at this point. And again, the fans will get restless and there's an awful lot of coaching going on as Harry now turns his back and he exposes his back to Kakareko and Kakareko does the thing he's supposed to do. He struck him there. Herring at one point didn't escape with a similar hold. He may try it again. He just took a couple of more shots. That, that, that right side or his left side should be very, very sore about this point. There he goes, another strike to the rib cage. And you can hear those and they, you know, that splat, man. And that's, that's got to definitely hurt. There appears to be a little bit of a lull in fighting, but not really. Both men are continuing to be very active. There's an awful lot of things going on in a very limited amount of space. I mean, there's no daylight between these two at this point. The one consistent thing that has occurred here in this fight, this championship fight between Heath Herring and Alexander Kakareko is the fact that Kakareko continues to pound Heath Herring's left side, his rib cage on the left side, and Herring is not countering very often. I have not seen him strike or headbutt or anything at this point in the last two or three minutes. Just throwing a couple of meager shots to the back of the head that are doing absolutely no damage. And there's a headbutt by Kakareko, and that one connected. I once saw Mark Kerr headbutt. Fabio Gujo in World Valley Tudo Championship number three, 61 times, 40 over his left eye alone. And he, when Gujo got out of that match, he never gave up. He lost the decision. But when he finished that match, his eye looked like E.T.'s head. I mean, it was grotesque. Had to go to the hospital. It was amazing. Not a lot of headbutting here, but that is a very favorite. There's one right there. Just as soon as I say it, there is not much. There goes one. Yeah, Fabio Gujo, one of the great jiu-jitsu people I've ever seen. He was given about 70 pounds away. Here, uh, about 50 pounds difference, depending on who you talk to. <laughs> oh, two big rights. Three. No answer. Four. Five. Oh, a shot. And that arm comes down again. Six, seven shots to the ribs. No answer from the American. Eight, nine, I could count all day. I may have to take off my shoes to keep counting. I might run out of uh, digits here. Boy, nine unanswered shots, and we are in the same position there along the screen, along the fence. Crowd getting a little anxious here. This is classic Valley Tudo fighting at its finest. 
Man, I'll tell you. Welcome back, Federico. I, uh, I noticed you checked on uh, Duarte again, and then I just saw him in the corner. He apparently is okay at this point. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, now we have uh, Avet Sian and his manager complaining, said that they did not put the finger in the eye. That was oh, Hugo's <laughs> fabrication. I think when we have this on videotape, uh, I think people will be able to see that very clearly, especially the abrasion on the eye, too. Yeah, I mean, that that's the, the unfortunate side about no holds bar fighting. You know, it's, you have to deal with all these things. Well, I mean, you can fight as dirty as you want. Just don't gouge anybody in the eye, right? <laughs> or bite them. Or bite them, yeah. Well, this is, uh, since you've been gone, this has been uh, just a marathon between these two. And the one consistent thing that I pointed out, all the strikes to the left rib cage of the American by Kakareko. He has just pummeled him on that side, and finally the arm is starting to come down. People chanting USA. They look no, Duarte, they're chanting. They look pretty tired, huh? Yeah. No, they're saying USA. Yeah, well, it sounded like Duarte. I, you know, I, I know he was a, oh, a big right hand. These guys are exhausted. They've been going at it. They're approaching 20 minutes. I mean, this has been a war, and, and, and it's been a war of attrition because you can just see the strength going out of the American right now as Kakareko continues to maintain his on-top position in the guard, and he continues to pummel the left side of Heath Herring. Nice crowd tonight. Oh, great crowd, yeah. Very attractive crowd, parts of it. <laughs> 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 I said, Lord, don't take my eyes. All right, we pan back over to the ring here. Great camera work here by our crew. Look at this, and they continue. Now, earlier when you left, the referee came in and made him stand up because uh, he felt there was not enough action. And about 10 seconds after they stood up, Kakareko came in with a uh, double leg takedown again, and the American looked so tired he couldn't, he just went down. Yeah, I mean, at, at this point, both guys are exhausted. The, the, the only what will make the difference now is who has the biggest heart, who wants to win the most. There's a headbutt inside, and another headbutt, and another. Changing his strategy a little bit, Alexander Karako, Kakareko, pardon me, as he uh, abandons the rights to the side and goes to the headbutt. Three of them unanswered. Those are a little bit dangerous, you know. That we've seen a lot of cases of fighters who try to headbutt their opponents and ended up cutting their own themselves. You know, I explained that you used to have a ring with Valley Tudo, but too many people were abusing that ring, and uh, you decided to go back to the cage. Right, right. Which I think is a great decision. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> It'll leave a mark. <laughs> You're going to see some chain marks on the, the head of American Heath Hearing, but I think it's a, it's a great fan favorite, too. Yeah, the, the thing I like about the ring is the cage gets a very bad publicity, and every time we travel, uh oh, that was it. That's it. He taps out. Yep. The he American taps out. He just could not take any more rights. He gave it his all, but Heath Herring loses to the much smaller Brazilian who has a lot of respect for his opponent. I'm I'm gonna go down now. It's time for me to give the belt. All right, Alexander Kakareko is your champion. I'll see you in a bit. There he is. What a great fight he fought. An amazing fight by the Brazilian who got on top. He used the double leg takedown three separate occasions. He got out of harm's way from the American, stayed away from the big strikes, and he wins this fight. There it is, they love it here in Aruba! Oh man, there's a very, very happy Alexander Kakareko. Very new to the sport, but he looked like an old pro. The American shaking his head thinking, I tried it. Fight went over 20 minutes, I believe. It was a great, great war of attrition, won by the Brazilian, the much smaller Brazilian. You can see the size difference right there. It's amazing. 